talking, being a little minority in this male dominant conspiracy theorist world is not easy, not easy, but I'm not here. But I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I would tell this because I would deliver the deliver. I would deliver the ladies gossip. Gossip. I don't care. I don't care. No filters. No filter. I'm always so much so that you guys. This is this is show. Here we are with another video and in this video I will be talking about Foxy Brown. Now you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep so here we go. Inga De Carlo Fong Marchand and I may have mispronounced that sorry aka Foxy Brown was born on September 6 1978 she was born in Brooklyn New York her mother was a teacher who hailed from Trinidad she raised her as a single parent in the Park Slope and Prospect Heights area of Brooklyn after splitting from her husband Foxy was only four at the time she's mixed with Afro Trinidadian Indo Trinidadian and Chinese Trinidadian descent Foxy was noticed after winning a talent contest in Park Slope. Some of the track masters were working with El Cool J, so they asked her to rap over Shatya. This followed many other feature songs with Tony Braxton, Jay Z, etc., etc. She was so hot. Def Jam and Bad Boys were literally in a bidding war on who can get her. Oh, yes. Foxy was only 17 years old at the time, maybe a little younger, and she was going on 18 years old, supposedly at this time she ended up signing to Def Jam but in the mix of this she got with little Kim the brat and told on got together and recorded one of the remix no one else this was the only song little Kim and her will appear in together then later in 1996 Foxy who got her name from one of Pam Greer's characters in one of the 1974 films I don't remember the name of it but go look it up Anyway, she finally released her first album called Nana. Nah. It featured many people. It spiraled up to the charts at number one. She had many more hits thereafter, but it was her legal issues, blindness, and hearing loss that caused a lot of drama. So let's get legal. Okay, Foxy Brown may have been, and she may be still, I don't know a killer rapper but the girl had a temper like a demon and because of this it caused her to get in trouble many times like for example she sped at two hotel workers in Malay, North Carolina when they told her they didn't have an iron available she also missed a court appearance and then an arrest warrant was issued but she finally turned herself in on April 30th 1997 and she then received a 30-day suspended sentence and was ordered to perform 80 hours of community service but it goes deeper Foxy Brown was also addicted to painkillers and many other prescription drugs because of her deep depression issues. But word on the street, she was doing cocaine and no telling what else. Then later, she was arrested in Jamaica, in the Jamaica airport, because she didn't want to be searched. So, she punched the policewoman in the stomach. She was detained for a second. And then they let her go with a court hearing. Of course, she didn't show up. So, an arrest warrant was issued again for her. She also pleaded guilty for assaulting a beauty supply store employee and for almost running over a stroller with a baby inside and so on and so forth with her crazy ass. Anyway, oh, don't get me started with her many feuds with little Kim. Wouldn't I get into that? Too much to read. And then there's Queen Latifah already talked about that we'll leave the link to that below and then queen pen who was linked to queen latifah and that also inspired a 10 percent diss record then she was in a feud with corrupt her ex-fiance res she was accused of having an affair with dmx she also had a feud with eve because eve accused her of having ghost wires of course foxy snapped back then she had a feud with ja rule because he dissed her while on the radio she of course snapped back and led her to record the album get off me then she had a feud with remy mai and the list goes on and on and on now let's get dark with this elite he, um some about stuff about spraga her going deaf just everything she's been going through right since you know foxy brown since was, the beginning of infant since, since inga machad became, yeah, since foxy. Inga Masha became foxy brown she funny totally thing gone. about it we have this relationship man where her brothers and I are cool, 
A lot of people say that. She don't like me. People, I, I've heard people say that though. Like I'm because cool with my brother, because I've been I very critical, right, of her because, and I've told her this personally. You have a golden opportunity as an artist to me to become something that that could have been stratospheric in your career, and mm -hmm. you you threw it all away being nasty to people. Man, you know what true. I mean? And a lot of that, a lot of it is very true. You know, you created. A lot of riffs where riffs didn't need to be created. And you get to a point in this in this business where people just get fucking tired of dealing with you if you're gonna be an asshole or bitch real. about shit. And that's Ain't pretty real. much what happened, you know, where a lot of that is what happened with Foxy. And it's just I guess people being critical of her at a time when she was quote unquote, I am Foxy Brown mm -hmm. and you not and you know, I take it to their ways. I don't give a fuck. Right. And we just we just don't have a good relationship. Like she just won't Sometimes she'll walk right past me and don't speak. But I mean, I hear the same thing about Jeremiah. Like, not that he's necessarily nasty, but just unprofessional. Just not showing up on time. Right. All out, just not showing up at all for various things. Oh, Interviews, wow. video shoots. Like, I've, when he had that episode, I guess it was, I don't remember if it was earlier this year or late last year, when he sent a fake Jeremiah on stage to perform. He was on tour with a party next door. Uh -huh. and he was unhappy, I guess, with the opening. He was opening up for party. And I guess they were in Chicago. He felt like, you know, Chicago was his home. He felt like he was supposed to open up. He was unhappy with things. So we sent out, like, his homeboy or something in, like, a hoodie and a hat to perform his, to, like, lip sync his song while the DJ played the record. You know, a lot of things changed. There was one time when I was in New York and I was on the radio. And uh, I had made a statement. There was a young man that had been a part of Murder, Inc. He was a new signee to Murder, Inc., and uh, he got shot and killed in a park not too far from where I grew up at in Queens. And I'm on the radio, uh, Ja, and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes people have to be careful with what they call their company. Right. And I said, I'm not single-handedly, I'm not just pointing out Murder, Inc., but this just brought this to mind, that when you call your company's death row, murder, and and this and that and the things, these kind of things come come around because that, they, they the mean people, something. Right, they mean something because the people that are that are not bright as you are don't understand it's just a moniker for a label. Right. And that you really don't mean it when John Irvin is like, it's murder. Especially not attached to rappers. Exactly. So I said that on the radio. The next day, Irvin Ja is on when my competitor at the time was Star Buck Wild. They on with Star and Buck Wild and Star, you know, Star likes to stir up stuff. Heard yeah, it. Lolo yeah. was talking about Charlie the other day. And Irvin Ja goes on. I'm soft. Um, I'm a punk. I'm this. I'm that. And I specifically said that I wasn't pointing out um, Murder Inc. Right. right. So I was burnt because I know Irv. Irv and I and Ja and all from the same neighborhood. Right. Irv is a shorty to me. Mm -hmm. He made something out of himself. I'm very proud of everything that he did. But growing up in that neighborhood, he was DJ Irv with his MC was Romeo. Mm -hmm. Irv was no tough guy in our neighborhood. Right. Not at all. Not saying that I was, but he was definitely not. Just well, He wasn't the gangster of gangsters. No, he wasn't a gangster, period. Okay. The, this Gotti moniker came when he got into the music business. Right. But we none of us was gangster. We knew street dudes. We knew who the motherfuckers in our neighborhood was. And right. it wasn't him. Right. So when I got a moniker of that, I'm like, yo, I'm coming up to Def Jam, and I'm going to see Irv about this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I know Ja, when Ja used to sell drugs on Springfield Boulevard, was getting sunned by a couple of dudes that I know. Right. So not all of a sudden, y'all got a successful rap label. You talk. You, you mm -hmm. tough talking. So Chase I called up there at the time. My sister, Sonia, my only sister, is the receptionist at Def Jam. Okay. So I called my sister. I said, yo, tell Irv I'm coming the fuck up there. All right, we're going to see what his mouth is like while I'm in front of his face. Mm -hmm. and my sister said, don't come up here. She said, Supreme is up here every day. I said, Supreme? Southside Supreme? The yeah. Supreme? These, I said, the Supreme Team Supreme? Right. She said, yeah, don't come up there. But later on, Irv and I, we talked it out, and we figured out it was a misunderstanding. They mm -hmm. misconstrued what someone had told them. You all have to know that the Elite initiated Foxy years ago when she first signed to deal with Def Jam Records. And I told you in a video with LL Cool J 
what they were into and trust me she was being pimped we'll leave the link to that below oh it was told that she was messing with jay-z and many others as i just said but let's talk about the relationship with jay-z and i talked about this in a video i did about him we'll leave the link to that below as well you see it was told that foxy said that jay-z gave her a disease and he also had sex with trainees etc well i didn't now here's the tea although it did come from media takeout but like I said in the video about El Kuje, all the rappers were into that back then. I mean, come on now. Y'all not stupid. You better ask Wendy Williams. She knows. And Foxy probably don't remember what the heck she said. She was so high back then. I mean, come on now. Oh, and do note, she did give her virginity to Jay-Z when she was really, really young. And she may have been around 15 years old, as Media Takeout pretty much stated, because that will follow the age where she won that talent contest and started hanging with El Cool J and them, and you know how they used to get down. So, it was told that Foxy was hearing voices and was sometimes seen talking to herself. Oh yes, this was going on back then. Sounds familiar? Hints, Fergie? Mm-hmm. We'll leave the link to her below as well. Oh, and her near blindness happened for not treating her comedia, and it was also rumored she um, got that from Jay-Z, who treated himself earlier for his. But that was before it was allegedly passed to Beyonce, who didn't know she had it, and that was one of the reasons she kept having miscarriages, along with stress and rumored physical violence. You see, Foxy is the victim of her own actions, but it wasn't all her fault. Growing up the way she did, with no real discipline and no guidance, she was left in the world to be used and passed around from what I've heard. Not to mention on getting hooked on drugs and prescription drugs and pretty much all of them. I mean, you'll have to understand, she was only 15 years old and hanging around men in their 20s and older. And you know, most men in their 20s are mostly hot-headed and horn baskets. No offense, not talking about all of them, just most of them. She had no father figure, no guidance, no real role models that led her to where she was then. Now, it has been told that she has long since been treated for her near blindness from chlamydia and has had a beautiful baby daughter. Congratulations. But it was also told that her hair has been treated as well so good for her but don't get too excited just yet she's coming after remy mai stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe like and share and also don't forget to follow my instagram twitter and facebook i posted them every day hope to see you all there love you all bye